The Glories of Mary by St. Alphonsus Liguori in the public domain because he lived and died over a hundred years ago. This is the introduction in this book. What should be read? My beloved reader and brother in Mary, since the devotion that led me to write and moves you to read, this book makes us happy children of the same good mother. Should you hear it remarked that I might have spared myself the labor as there are already so many celebrated and learned works on the same subject, I beg that you will reply in the words of Abbot Francon that the praise of Mary is an inexhaustible fount. The, lar the more it is enlarged, the fuller it gets. And the more you fill it so much, the more it is enlarged. In short, this blessed virgin is so great and so sublime that the more she is praised, the more there remains to praise. So much so, says an ancient writer, that if all the tongues of men were put together, and even if each of their members were changed into a tongue, they would not suffice to praise her as much as she deserves. I have seen innumerable, innumerable works of all sizes which treat all of the glories of Mary, but finding that they were rare, vol voluminous, and did not answer the object I had in view, I endeavored to collect from as many authors as I could lay my hands on the choicest passages extracted from fathers and theologians and those which seem to me to be the most to the point and have put them together in this book in order that the devout may with little trouble and expense be able to inflame themselves with the love of Mary and more particularly to furnish priests with matter for their sermons wherewith to excite others to devotion toward this Divine Mother. Worldly lovers often speak of those whom they love and praise them in order that the object of their affections may be praised and extolled by others. There are some who pretend to be lovers of Mary and yet seldom either speak of her or endeavor to excite others to love her. Their love cannot be great. It is not thus that true lovers of this amiable lady act. They desire to praise her on all, on all occasions and to see her loved by the whole world and never lose an opportunity, either in public or in private, of enkindling in the hearts of others those blessed flames of love with which they themselves burn towards their beloved queen. That everyone may be persuaded how important it is both for his own good and that of others, to promote devotion towards Mary. It is useful to know that what theologians say on the subject. St. Bonaventure says that those who make a point of announcing to others the glories of Mary are certain of heaven. And this opinion is confirmed by Richard of St. Lawrence, who declares that to honor this queen of angels is to gain eternal life. And he adds, that this most gracious lady will honor in the next world those who honor her in this. And who is ignorant of the promise made by Mary herself in the words of Ecclesiastes to those who endeavor to make her known and loved here below, that they explain me, that they, they that explain me shall have ev life everlasting. For this passage is applied to her by the church in the office of the Immaculate Conception. Rejoice then, says St. Bonaventure, who did so much to make the glories of Mary known. Rejoice my soul and be glad in her, for many good things are prepared for those who praise her. And he says that the whole of the sacred scriptures speak in praise of Mary. Let us therefore always with our hearts and tongues honor that this divine mother, in order that we may be conducted by her into the kingdom of the blessed. We learn from the revelations of St. Bridget that the blessed Bishop Imingo was in the habit of always beginning his sermons with the praises of Mary. One day the blessed Virgin herself appeared to the saint and desired to tell him that in consequence of his pious practice, she 
would be his mother, that he would die a holy death, and that she would present her that she would herself present his soul to God. He died like a saint in the act of praying and in the most heavenly peace. Mary also appeared to a Dominican friar who always concluded his sermons by speaking of her. When on his deathbed, the Blessed Virgin defended him from the devils, consoled him, and then she herself carried off this, his happy soul. The devout Thomas Kempis represents to us Mary recommending a soul who had honored her honored her to her son and saying, My most loving son, have mercy on the soul of this servant of thine who loved and extolled me. Next, as to the advantage of this devotion for all, St. Anselm says that as the most sacred womb of Mary was the means of salvation for sinners, the hearing of her praises must necessarily convert them and thus also be a means of their salvation. How can it be otherwise then that the salvation of sinners should come from the remembrance of her praises, whose womb was made the way through which the Savior came to save sinners? And if the opinion is true, uh, and I consider it as un indubitably so, as I shall show in the fifth chapter, that all graces are dispensed by Mary, and that all who are saved are saved only by the means of this Divine Mother. It is a necessary consequence that the salvation of all depends upon preaching Mary and exciting all to confidence in her intercession. It is well known that it was thus that St. Bernardine of Siena sanctified Italy and that St. Dominic converted so many provinces St. Louis Bertrand never omitted in his sermons to exhort all to love Mary, and many others have done the same. I find that Father Paul Segneri the Younger, who was a very celebrated missioner, in every mission preached a sermon on devotion to Mary, and always called it his beloved sermon. And in our own missions, in which it is an inviolable rule to do the same, we can attest with all truth that in most cases no sermon is more profitable or produces so much compunction in the hearts of the people as the one on the mercy of Mary. I say on her mercy, for in the words of St. Bernard, we praise her virginity, we admire her humility, but because we are poor sinners, mercy attracts us more and tastes sweeter. We embrace mercy more lovingly. We remember it oftener and invoke it more earnestly. And for this reason, I here leave other authors to describe other prerogatives of, of Mary and confine myself for the most part to that of her mercy and power, powerful intercession. Having collected as far as I am able and with the labor of many years, all that the Holy Fathers and the most celebrated writers have said on this subject, and as I find that the mercy and power of the Most Blessed Virgin are admirably portrayed in the prayer, Salve Regina, the recital of which is made obligatory for the greater part of the year on all clergy, secular and regular, I shall divide and explain this most devout prayer in separate chapters. In addition to this, I thought that I should, should be giving pleasure to Mary's devout clients by adding discourses on the principal fest, festivals and virtues of this divine mercy and by placing at the end of the work, the devotions and pious practices most used by her services and most approved of by the church. Devout reader, should this work, as I trust it will, prove acceptable to you, I beg that you will recommend me to the Blessed Virgin, 
that she may give me a great confidence in her protection. Ask this grace for me, and I promise you, whoever you may be, that I will ask the same for you who do me this charity. O oh, blessed are they who bind themselves with love and confidence to these two anchors of salvation, Jesus and Mary. Certainly they will not be lost. Let us then both say, devout reader, with the pious Alphonsus Rodriguez, Jesus and Mary, my most sweet loves, for you may I suffer, for you may I die. Grant that I may be in all things yours and in nothing mine. Let us love Mary and Jesus and become saints. We can neither expect nor hope anything better. Farewell then until we meet in paradise at the feet of this most sweet mother and of this most loving son. There to praise them, to love them face to face for all eternity. Amen. Amen.